What's the crack lads? Welcome back to another player pack review. Today we're taking a look at the player transfers. It's gonna move my mic two secs. And these are club transfers that have happened in the winter transfer market, obviously. So you've got Jorginho, you've got Felix, you've got Mudrick, you've got pretty much 50 players from Chelsea in this contract. Uh, no, I'm only joking. But yeah, there are some really good beasts in here, especially I would say if you have an end game level team. I'm gonna be doing a video, right? I'm gonna I, I have a lot of videos. I have a lot of videos to plan, but I think the gameplay has changed a lot with V2.4 in a tiny, tiny way, but has a big impact on training players. So I'm going to get into that in this video, but I am, I have one that will be up either today or tomorrow, um, depending on whether, whether I upload it. I've been trying to smash out the videos, but I would say straight away, you're obviously going to be looking at Felix here, Zhao Felix. Um, and Zhao was a fantastic player in the game. I think he's just kind of, there's an overabundance of brilliant players like him with similar stats and stuff like that. So if you are going to be spinning a five-star or your free five-star nominating contract, you can do that in your match pass. And I think he is probably the pick of all the nominating contracts. Maybe him and Verratti from the other pack, the club icons. I've already done a review on that as well. But Jan Sommer as well. If you do not have a top, top, top class keeper, or if you do have Donnarumma, and he's just not doing it for you. Because I know Donnarumma, I think he's the undisputed best goalkeeper in the game. But I know sometimes he can be mistake uh, friendly. So yeah, we are going to start obviously with the lower ra rated players. And then just go through them loosely. Um, but this guy is a, is a monster man. He's got standard form. He has area superiority. If you're looking for a kind of a giant at the back with the way that the game has gone, it's gone very direct and you're going to be getting a lot of balls into the box. You're going to be getting a lot of balls kind of breaking down in the air. Um, this guy is, is a monster, but his, his lack of player skills, interception and blocker. I don't go near any center back that does not have one of the two, blocker and interception. And usually I go for uh, center backs with both and that are mobile. I have one mobile center back and then I have one kind of beastly defender that has got really, really high defensive awareness, right? So this guy has neither. When we train him up, this is his stats. So he does max out at an 88. We give him 10 points into defending. Now we could obviously take away a couple of his lower body uh, uh, pace. We could take away three of them and pump one more into defending. Take maybe one away from aerial and pump one more into defending there. But we're no matter what we do, unless we just completely neglect every other stat upgrade in the progression points, we're not going to get... Like, we could take away dribbling as well if you don't want to. I wouldn't advise that, but we could get a 90 defensive awareness with 89 tackling. We're still only going to get 80 aggression, so that's a big no-no for me. We also have Alex Moreno, the new Aston Villa signing. He is an offensive fullback. He's a pass-friendly, pass-first kind of center or left-back, right-back, um, depending on where you play him. Obviously, he's going to be playing left-back or left-mid, I should say. Sorry, not right-mid, not right-back. But he's got really decent speed, but his passing kind of lets him down. His dribbling needs to be boosted up a bit. Even if you take away the dribbling and leave it at that and boost up his passing, you're not going to get the passing into the 80s. So in my opinion, I don't think that he's probably going to be worth putting into your squad. If you are obviously an Aston Villa fan, you might think against that and obviously get him in. Lovren, again, he's a very he's a very high-rated uh, center back but again there's a lot of I call them empty calorie stats man that's what they are right there's a lot of stats here that boost up his overall but they're not going to make a massive difference to his actual player card so he's got a blocker he has got heading man marking blocker and aerial superiority as well as sliding tackle he doesn't have interception blocker is more important for a center back he has unwavering form he's on b rating obviously uh this week and he also has very very high aggression which is quite decent so he's not a bad He's not a bad choice, lads. If you were looking to get maybe a three star, he's actually not a bad choice to have because of his player ID and the fact that, you know, there, do there doesn't seem to be that much of a punishment for players that are slow in the game. He's only got 60 acceleration, right? We also have, who are we going to next? Malinowski or Weghorst? We'll go with Weghorst because we have him up on our other screen. Now, I've played a lot with Weghorst, obviously with the new uh, matches that you can play against, you know, real teams. And lads, his actual ability on the ball is desperate, right? Is desperate. You have to boost up his dribbling and you have to boost up his speed a little bit as well. All you'll be using Wakehurst for, lads, is like a hammer to a nail. You're going to be just swinging balls into him, you know, hoping he gets on the end of crosses. He does have fantastic aerial ab ability. He's got aerial superiority. He's got heading. He's got chip shot control. He actually has one touch pass and fighting spirit, which is unusual, but he does get up and down the pitch a lot. And he's a big unit, man. If you don't have Yang Collar or if you don't have a target man, you could do worse than spin for him uh, with a four-star nominating contract. He goes up to 89 overall when we train him. That way, 
91 header, 83 offensive awareness, and 90 physical contact. And, you know, pretty much that's the way you're going to play him. We also have Malinovsky. This guy went to Marseille uh, as a new signer from the Ukrainian. He's a very, very good player as well. Now, you can train this guy up multiple ways, right? I would say that you do need to get his acceleration up to 75, so you need to pump six into that, mostly for his balance. If you don't boost up his dexterity, you know, you're going to have 68, 69 balance, which isn't enough for them positions in the pitch. Um, passing, dribbling, and dexterity, all 9, 8, 6, and then shooting 6 as well. Now, if you don't shoot a lot, um, I will be covering that in that video. You can leave that at maybe 70 finishing, 78 curl, and you could pump up maybe the rest of his dexterity. If you get that to 80, that would be a pretty decent one as well. You can also put uh, the aerial strength down there and get one more into, into that. He's a 90 rated AMF, but there's just so many good AMFs. I mean, I wouldn't bother. Personally, I wouldn't bother with him. Even though he does have decent stats, there are way better players there. And he does have be he does have good player skills as well. But he doesn't have one-touch pass. He does have low lofted. And he does have unwavering form. So that's not too bad. We also have one of the new sign-ins that a lot of eyes are on. Mudrik, who is a Ukrainian left winger. So one of his international teammates. Um, we do have the two of them boys there. And... Look, if you are going to be buying somebody, like I, I definitely would recommend buying players that are de like are kind of like unique, right? And he's not really unique. He's got nice stats. He's got nice player skills, but I don't think that he's truly unique. He's got one touch pass and super sub, um, which is nice. I would be using him as a super sub, double touch. He doesn't have heel trick, which is a pity. He doesn't have any really shooting apart from long range curler. Um, but yeah, he is, he is a pretty beast. When you look at him as a, like, straight up, um, like, winger, he is pretty decent, but when you look at him as a super sub, he is a monster altogether, so that's what I would be bringing him on for, as, like, I would build this card, this is a build that would be specifically for bringing him on as a super sub, right? So you've got pace, you've got dribbling, and you've got shooting that we are going to do. This is his build for just pace, if you're worried about that. And then for the shooting, because he's got that long range, you don't need to worry too much about his pace here. You're just going to be cutting in. You also don't need to worry a massive amount with his dribbling once his dribbling is at 80. And then you could pump in the rest. You don't need to worry about passing either because obviously you're just going to be using this guy as a very direct long range curler. Like we can get 80 curl on that. That's all we need with that long range curler. And then we can pump in the rest how we see fit. We can even pump that back up a bit if we want, um, you know, and get the passing back up. But we will be using this guy as kind of like a cut in from the right. And then obviously we are cut in from the left and be able to shoot on the right, similar to how Neymar plays. We also have Sabitzer, who went to United from Bayern Munich on loan. Um, pretty average centre midfielder. His defensive awareness and tackling is quite poor. But the rest of his stats are very decent. They're very average, I would say. They're not amazing, but they are very average. Now, I've played with this guy as well, and his touch is a big concern um, when you actually train him up. So that is something to keep in mind as well. The same guy, uh, Sarabia, Pablo. This guy is from Wolves. He's on loan, I think, as well. I'm not too sure that he actually go there um, full-time. But he's a very similar right winger as well to Mudrik. He's got, you know, the cut in. He's got better finishing, so we boosted up his shooting. But if you want to boost up, if you don't shoot a lot, as I keep repeating, you can take that maybe down to like 75, 74 and 78. Carl, you'll still be able to get a lot of shots. He's got dipping shots. He's got early cross. He's got a lot of good player skills. And then you can pump up the rest into dexterity to bring up his offensive awareness as high as you can. And you'll still get, what, 75 on finishing, 79 on curl. So he's a, a pretty decent player as well. We'll just show you his stats there. So that's what I would boost him up there. Uh, if you guys are interested in him, that's the build. 3, 6, 8, 12, and 9 for shooting, pass, and dribbling, dexterity, and lower body. And then we have a Jorginho. So Jorginho's biggest problem is his lack of pace. But you don't really notice that that much when you are playing with him. He kind of sits in the pocket, and he just kind of like soaks up a lot of pressure. He has interception. He's unwavering form. He's got one-touch pass, true passing, pinpoint crossing. So you don't need to boost up his passing as high as we have it here. Now, this is what I would kind of recommend doing. You put three into passing just to bring it up to 90 if you want to do that. Just with the with the other player skills, that will complement the player skills very nicely indeed. Eight into dribbling, six into dexterity, six into lower body, and then nine into defending. You're going to get 90 defensive engagement, the 88 aggression. You can kind of mess around with that formula depending on how defensive you like to play. And then last but not least, we do have uh, Summer and Felix. So Summer is a really, really good player. Um, he's probably one of the picks of him, right? He's an excellent goalkeeper, unwavering form, low punt and long throw. 
if you are starting off, I would definitely recommend, right? If you're downloading the game today or tomorrow um, or yesterday, I would definitely recommend get this guy. He will be an absolute monster for you and he will win you games or he will definitely stop you conceding that many goals. 92 reflexes, 88 awareness, 82 catching. Don't worry too much about that. Just focus on clearing, jump, awareness and reflexes. He's a lovely height. Even though he's small, he will be able to jump up fairly high with that, seven, with that 88. And he's also got every player style low punt that you could want. So that's the build there. Eight into goalkeepers, one. Two is nine, and then goalkeeper three stat is six, and then one into aerial strength to tie that up. And now we have Felix, right? So Felix is a f he's he's kind of a bit of a, a bit of a hard one, right? Because like on paper, he is an exceptionally talented player. Um, stat wise, you can build him both ways, right? So just to spend a little time on him to see this video out, right? We've gone for the kind of like traditional kind of pacey bringing the ball forward type of AMF that's not going to be doing a lot of shooting and not going to be doing a lot of um, moving around with the ball right so with his player skills obviously we're going to take a look here he does have standard form but he has one touch pass he has double touch Marseille turn he's got a lot of really nice stats outside curler and player skills he's got a, a lot of them he's going to be a very very good on the ball right with the way the dribbling is gone but if we are going training him up I think you could either focus on that or else you can take away a couple of these. I would still leave his offensive awareness at 80. So whatever the acceleration is, six points into dexterity. <clears throat> I would also put maybe five points into this to have his speed at 82. And then I would kind of continue to go and boost up either his shooting to bring that up to 78 and 75 with outside curler. Or else if you wanted to just have him in the pocket, you can have him here and have 89 low pass. You can even go one step further if you wanted to and take that down to 80 and you can have a really good passing here. Like, you're going to be spinning a lot, but 90 ball control, 92 dribbling type possession, and then 90 low body or low pass, that's going to be a pretty beastly player, and then you can have pop one into shooting if you want as well, 93 overall. It's a bit of a different build, but I would definitely go with the acceleration one. So that is it, lads. There's a lot of players in that um, that we will be looking at again, and I will probably obviously get Felix. I already bought Mudrick. I'm going to be testing him out because you know me, I like my wingers. I will probably buy Felix and Samer. If there's one player in particular you want me to actually get gameplay with, let me know and we will go from there. Other than that, lads, I hope you enjoyed the video. A bit of a lengthy one, but hopefully it covers everything in detail. Picks of it would be starting off Samer, early game Felix or Jorginho, and then maybe mid game for testing things out. I would probably have, you know, Weghorst or Mudrick as kind of like options off the bench. Mudrick for a super sub, he turns into a beast as a super sub. As a starting winger, he's not going to be the best. But as a super sub, it's game changing. If you aren't used to playing with super subs and you want that boost to come on, uh, he will be a very, very good player. But the rest of them are kind of interchangeable with players on the standard GP uh, player list. So yeah, that is it for me, lads. I'll be back quite soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.